All right, Ben, over there. A few questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, Lovely. Sure. Uh, you know, with the transfer window coming up, we assumed you'd be making some deals, but I have some questions regarding the One Football right. app. Go on. Is it true it's one of the best apps on the market for up-to-date football news? Yeah, it's one of my personal favourites, I would say. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And is it true you can check the scores from around the globe and tailor them to your preferences? Yeah, you can do all that, yeah. It's great. Few touch to the screen. It's uh, sorted, really. Apparently, I can watch highlights through the app as well as get all the transfer news Both and gossip. Those. It's, it's, a, it's really good, trust me. So I can select my favourite team and get notified as the information breaks. Yeah, I assume you'd be adding spells oh. to your list of favourites. No, no, I'm a die-hard Preston North End fan. You wouldn't find me portraying the Lily Whites. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, is that everything? No, is it available on Apple and Android devices? Yes, it's available on both devices. Lovely, absolutely lovely. Good- and would you say it's linked to science, one of your favourite things by the app? Yes! Thanks, that's everything. <sighs> Does anyone want to ask me about Roberto Saldana's future? Anyone? Anyone? How is Roberto Saldana getting on? Not you. Oh. Three, two, one, go. Hello there, folks. Welcome back, then, to the Espalian Job. It is a transfer special. Hopefully you enjoyed the intro. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. And transfer windows mean transfer fun. And uh, it's not. I'm not alone to... Here we go. Breaking news here, folks. Then Spa released six players, and I say released, sold for actual money. My God. Soldado is gone. Bacali has gone. Leroy Farr is out the door, as well as Garzol in Sydney and Ravel Morrison. These boys have all left the club for transfer fees, totaling around 8.25 million. We're expecting, then, that money to be spent on players, big names to come into Spa, and the first of which, I'm sure, will be announced very, very soon. Indeed, then. There's six names that have left the club. We'll start with Roberto Soldado. He's left to Copenhagen. Uh, it's £63,000. Last season, two goals, one assist in 13 games. It's not it's not amazing form. Uh, four from the sort of substitute bench, nine starts. See you later, Roberto. It was fun while it lasted. He's no Danny Graham. Moving slightly up the pay scale then, uh, Leo Fur has left for 350000 I was just entirely unimpressed by Leo Fur. I thought we were going to get a different kind of player, and he just he never put his stamp on games at all. So, Leo Fur, off you go. 30 years of age, got some money for him. Happy days. This one I feel a bit sad about. Brought him in. He can play everywhere. He can do a bit of everything. He's been decent for me when he's played, but last season didn't really live up to expectations. And you can't have players like Roberto Insignia if you want to progress, want to move forward. So, Roberto, I'm sorry to say goodbye. I mean, it's 450k for a 450k. We sold him to Atalanta. Why is that relevant, Ben? Oh, you'll see. Ali Garzel's also left the team. Quite a good defensive midfielder. Quite a solid player. Uh, sold him for 1.5 billion. Brought him in for 1.8. So he made a small loss. Just hasn't featured as much as I thought he would. I thought if, if he'd have played every game, it would have been the kind of player that I really would have enjoyed using, I think. But the way the system worked with some of the players we had, he just didn't find a spot, really. And uh, has left for, for over a million. So I think that's not too bad. Really good international. Uh, and will do well at Dynamo Moscow, I imagine. But just doesn't fit the team right here, right now. So we had to move him on and get someone else in two to go then Bacali has left the building and this is this is a funny one basically Bacali wanted to leave uh, it wasn't a case that I wanted to sell it was just that he wanted to leave we bought him for 3.1 million it says they've sold him for 2.9 it's actually 4.1 uh, on a rising fee so we will hopefully make some money on him last year came in 14 appearances only one goal and two assists I was hoping for so much more so that was obviously meant I had to bring in some different wingers and uh, speaking of attacking options that didn't live up to expectation 3 million Ravel Morrison has gone. It says there 5.5 million. Good luck getting any kind of performance out of him. He was decent for us last year without having a really good average rating. Four goals, six assists. I mean, three million. Got him on a free. I think that's pretty good business. When you see who you've brought in, I think we'll all agree that's quite good business. So, uh, right, let's focus on some ins, shall we? And I'll let Ben Sports News take you through the first one. First of the breaking transfer news items today, then I'm back for some more. But that's the first bit of breaking news. I'm here again. I mean, two transfer windows, summer transfer windows in a row. My God. Nicholas Nkudu has signed for Spal, the Cameroon defender. 96 caps on him so far. Very well-known player in African football and world football. Signs for Spal will be a first-choice centre-back. And actually, he's not a bad player. I mean, I'm, I thought I'm shocked. Seriously, are they all going to be this good? Because... No, 
They're not really working. That's right. Nicholas and Kudu. He may well be 30 years of age, uh, but my my God, has he been around the block. Of course, you'll probably know him from his time in Ligue 1, Monaco, Marseille, and more recently, uh, Olympic Lyon. So I think this is the kind of transfer. Although his average ratings don't say that he's been a fantastic player, his attributes do. 14 heading, 14 marking, 14 tackling. Mental attributes very, very good. For someone that's 30, fantastic physical attributes. At 5 foot 11, not the tallest. His, head, his heading's not the best, but in terms of a solid defence, at the back got a little bit of passing ability as well i think this is your man free transfer as i say i think we've done pretty well here nicholas and kudu then is in the van and to go alongside him our loanee from juventus we've signed uh loan right backs before of course venuti pedro Pereira, 22 years of age uh, portuguese defender a sp starts the game at benfica but a slow defense does he start benfica or does he start some Doria, actually may well start some Doria. anyway it's been around a little bit you've picked him up for 10.25 million then loaned him out to sasolo sasulo Sassuolo. <laughs> One of those. And we've got him on a loan fee for a million pounds for the season. And I think he's just what I'm looking for. Decent crossing attributes as well. Heading, marking, tackling, all quite good. Physically fantastic. Mental solid as well. Uh, to play right back. Him and Hatterbor will probably rotate quite a lot with cup competitions and whatnot. But I think Pereira will probably be our first choice. I'm happy about it. Some more breaking news here, folks. Spal have been in the transfer market once again. 4.8 million spent on two players from relegated Atalanta. Yosu and Luca. V I know he's not good at saying names, but neither am I. Let me read. Valzanea, Zanea, is it Valzanea? Valzanea. It'll be calling him Luca anyway, so I don't know what the difference is. He's brought in Luca and Josu. Brilliant. There we go. I know that wasn't professional, but for God's sake, I mean, I don't know, do I? Yes, Luca Valzanea. Nia, Nia, Luca Val, Luca. He's, he predicted right. Now, Luca has been assigned for actual money, three point seven million, and while again. Stats-wise, doesn't look like he produces that much. Atalanta have been relegated, so we've got two players from them. Luca is the first. I think as a central midfielder, you think we got rid of Leroy Fur, right? If you compare the two, let's compare the two. If you compare Leroy Fur to Luca, you can kind of see immediately that we've upgraded, and I'm very, very happy with him. Got him on a, a relegation release clause. Uh, 24 years of age, can be here for a little while, and I think attribute wise he's got the things i want in all the right places great work great good passing technique solid as well physicals are very very solid as well so i'm happy i think he's almost a square but i like it and as mentioned yosu alongside him 29 years of age you talk about leaving or getting rid of ravel morrison getting yosu in for 1.1 million you look at the stats he had in Serie A last season a little bit of an upgrade and consistently produces these sorts of stats and that's what i looked at when we got him in now really good player to be able to get in for 1.1 million for these sort of attributes of course 29 years of age hasn't got a long time left and his physicals are declining but look at the mentals look at the technicals just look at his face he's beautiful so he's in very happy i should mention while we're here, uh, Philip Caffrey is now signed to the club. You might remember we signed him uh, a while ago. He's now here from Ireland, so he he's not bad. Average rating-wise, he's not bad. We'll see how much football he actually gets this year, does little Philip Caffrey. Another free transfer, folks. He spent all the money. Why are we doing free transfer updates? Do the ones with the money. He bought Pellegrini and we missed that. God's sake. Okay, fair enough. Kelvin, former Porto wing, has been brought in. What a sight. That, that's not, again, not a bad sight. He's doing okay. Kelvin's been brought in. You can imagine my disappointment when it wasn't one of the chipmunks, can't you? Yeah. I mean. Kelvin, Simon, Theodore. Do, 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 Here we're, the transfer news. Thanks for watching. He trusted me with this job, and I'm, just, I'm throwing it back in his face. He's on it today, isn't he? My God, there's quite a few transfers to go, and I'm going to show you all those. I'm, so, I'm sort of saving the best till last, and believe me, Ben Sports News is not smart enough to get those transfers. But Kelvin, a name that will be familiar to a lot of people, a few years ago was touted as one of the best young prospects on, not, not, not just on the game, but in real life football as well. It's never really worked out. You can see he's been to Brazil, he's been back to Portugal, and now he's ended up at Spal. Now, he's not had the greatest of seasons recently, as, as you can see there. Mar Maritino, Maritimo, I think. Uh, eight appearances, nothing nothing coming from that uh, but the years before that 30, 30 appearances eight goals three assists and that's the sort of form we're hoping we can pick up 
as a winger, he's got everything you want. He's got the pace, he's got the dribbling ability, he can cross it in as well, a little bit of flair, can play on either side, and that's what I really like about him, the versatility of Kelvin. When you think, we've got him on a free transfer, we've, we've moved on Bacali, who didn't produce that much. Ke Kelvin's really got not got that much to live up to, so I think we've done quite well there with Kelvin. I think he looks good. And speaking of Porto, this might be the icing on my Porto-based cake. We've got Alfonso Sousa, a name that if you've played the game this year, you will certainly recognise. You can see he had a loan spell at Braga recently, as well as Nantes, and he produces the goods, I think it's fair to say. You can see from his spell at Braga last year, 10 goals, 7 assists. Alfonso Sousa might be the game-changing central midfielder or attacking midfielder that we're looking for. He's 5'5", five five, not the tallest, but let's not focus on his heading attributes, my God. Let's focus on everything else. The amount of yellow you can see on the screen sums it up. Five and a half star, sorry, four and a half star uh, current ability. Oh, yes, that one I'm very happy about. And there's a few more. And he may have missed it, but Padagini's back. We've signed him on a £1.1 million deal uh, from Torino. Bacardi went one way, we got Padagini the other. And after what he did for me last season, seven assists in 16 games after coming in the January, very happy to secure his services. I'm happy to show you the screen. I've been hiding it from you. Uh, right, there's a few players we've brought in uh, for a couple for, is it one for money? Yeah, one for money we'll focus on first then. Uh, Glucklu, 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 I think it would be. Metahan Glucklu. Now you can see he, he was signed for 275k from the Paris Saint Germain reserves. Uh, scored nine goals last year for money AZFC. And that's not well. I'm not. He's not. A, he's not a striker for me. We brought him for 600k, and based on his attributes and based on what he's got in his locker, I'm going to play him as a winger all season. Two and a half star current ability, five star potential, 21 year old Turkish uh, international actually. So I think we could get some good performances. Passing and work rate needs to be improved, but everything else, I think he's a little X factor on that winger, that wing, wing spot. Just you wait and see. Six foot two as well. Like that. And finally, Amano Renzi has been brought in. Now, interestingly about Amano Renzi, uh, on loan from Inter, young, Italian, I think he could be the sort of... Okay, if, if anything happens to Dorian Heiser, then uh, Renzi will be the guy to replace him and hopefully have a fantastic career here at Spal. Attempts overhead kicks, shoot from distance, moves into channels, that's the one I really like, and looks to, uh, or likes to try and beat the offside trap again, something I really enjoy. Uh, spent some time at Parma last Last year, where he got 19 goals and 7 assists in 37 games in Serie B, don't forget. And um, yeah, I think he's, he's very similar to Heiser in, in terms of his attributes, and that's why I've brought him in. If, if anything happens to Dorian, this is the man that will surely replace him. And there we are then. That concludes the squad for this season. We will play a game today as well. So this is a longer episode, probably, up, probably closer to 20 minutes at this point. Uh, but yeah, we're going to play a game. Tactics-wise, this is what we're going with then. If you look across the board at our side, all of a sudden, we have quite a good quite a good setup going on. Uh, the reason for Pedro Pereira playing at left-back and Hatsupo playing at right-back for this first game is we've got three suspensions. Balak's still here uh, and suspended. Baloko suspended, as is Luca, who can't play in the centre for us today. So it gives us lots of options. I think squad-wise, we're as strong as we've ever been. Easily stronger than last year. Um, we've still got £7 million to spend. January. That's when I think that'll come into play. When Alberto said he's transfer listed and we can bring him home, that's when I think we can spend that money. But yeah, 4 2 3 1. Quite simple, quite basic, and with lots of room to manoeuvre and change. Uh, we can go more defensive if needs be. We've still got players like Toscano. The boy is still here at the club as well. So we've got options if needs be. And the depth in our squad now is far greater with some stars. And that's what we were lacking last year, some star power. I think Alfonso Sousa, as mentioned already, is going to be that star. But I guess we'll find out this season and we'll see what he produces. Dorian Heiser, of course, is still progressing nicely, looking good. And, uh, and hopefully we'll be even better come the end of the season. Still only 18 years of age. How crazy is that? So let's get into our first game. And it's against a team that really we've always done quite well against. Pre-season, by the way, has gone bloody well. We also went through the Tim Cup, but Napoli awaits us today, so let's take them on. Now, of course, last year, and I don't know what Napoli have done. I guess we'll take a look. Last year, I will show you the instructions before we carry on. Uh, higher tempo, closing down more, looking for the, to exploit the flanks, working it into the box and playing fairly wide. Quite simple. I'm playing on a standard approach with room to move it up and down. Kelvin needs a number. Uh, 27 for some reason. So what do you think about the transfers then, folks? Let me know. Comment section. That's where you'll critique. 
Okay, starting off the season against Napoli. I guess actually, what have Napoli done? Now, they're now a very good year last year. Napoli finished 11th, so not their best season. Uh, they've sold Duara. Milik's gone as well. And they've only brought in two names. David Costas has come in. Centre-back looks pretty average. That is David Costas. And then uh, Chokhev, I think. Again, I mean, he looks... Looks okay without being super special. Okay, we'll see how we get on. Bit of an aging side, Napoli. This could be interesting. All right, the Signy will be up front. They've got Caloron, Hamsik, Zelinski, Jorginho, uh, Munoz and Koulibaly. Okay, actually, they're still, they're still good. They're still very good. I'm trying to play it down. Like, they're rubbish. They're not rubbish. But this will be a contest for our boys. You know, pre-season's gone well. Uh, this isn't really our first... A bit annoying. This isn't our first 11. We don't have Boloko. We don't have Luca. So I guess we'll have to see how we get on. But we are in the blue and whites, and we can we can lengthen the lead table now. Uh, of course, match that someone side league table on the other let's win this match please somehow oh pause we had some stadium news hopefully i've got the screenshot saved show the screenshot on screen fight bed fight, bloody find it okay as you can see from said screenshot i've just i found it somewhere i knew when it happened i need to keep it uh, the board have announced plans to win the National Stadium by 4,750 seats. Uh, initial estimates indicate the planned work will cost 7.75 million. That's 7.25 million. The board have secured a loan of 3 million. It'll take three months to complete. The 14th of September. I don't know what's happening, but new expansion plans were announced, and uh, it's a bit more seating. So we're getting. We're gonna have to wait and see. 23,000 will be the overall capacity. I'm looking forward to it, but next episode, the wall may well be gone. It's not quite that time yet. I'm just, in case we get a replay and you see the wall, you'll know why. As Eric Christig finds Sousa on the edge. I've brought you in for a reason, my friend. That That's that's not the reason, but I like that you've got the ball in lots of space there. More of that, please, team. Let's make that happen. Okay, so far, quite a dull 15 minutes. Quite an even game. The only shot of the game came from us. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. I guess in terms of season expectations, I think mid-table, securing ourselves in mid-table, not being in a relegation fight this season, absolutely not. Getting mid-table and then progressing forward towards Europe, that has got to be the goal. I think the team we've got now, as I say, is much better than last year's. Last year's transfer window was a bloody mess. This year's, I feel, is far better. Uh, far more concise. We've got a much better players generally across the board. Casola was brought in in the January. He now goes alongside Nkulu as we get to half time. We're holding Napoli quite comfortably here. Of course, the transfer window is not, not over yet. There's still room for the odd thing to happen. And when I say odd, I mean the bizarre stuff to happen. So let's not rule out any ins and outs at this late stage, but you'll find out that next episode. Guklu is already suffering a little bit for fitness, 66%. I mean, we do have Loa Loa waiting in the wings. In fact, let's get, let's get, um, Kazenga on, get the Wallawar out there. Kevin on one side, the Wallawar on the other. Lovely stuff. Right, I mean, time's ticking away here. I, I, it's a very boring game to have as your first game of the season, but we seem to have the best of that. Oh, Ben, you've opened your big mouth and now look what's occurred. Zelinski. Oh, of course it has. It's the, it's the only thing we've seen them do all game, and it's gone in. They say this building work. I can't, I can't, I mean, the wall's still there, so I don't know what building work's occurring. If they, if they do. 4,000 more seats and don't fill in the... the mm. Right, 10 minutes to go. We best go attacking. Oh, do we make a, an attacking change as well? Um, let's get Renzi on. Time to be a hero. We'll take Chris Dig off. We'll bring Renzi on as a as an advance forward alongside Dorian Heiser. Uh, Yasu can... Well, let's, we'll just have two playmakers. Look, we're, trying to, we're trying to get a goal here. Loa, Loa, left side. Ball put into... No, that wasn't a highlight. That was a lie. Can we find a late goal? I mean, it's going to be Napoli going forward again. If they score two, I feel like that's, that's most unjust. There's about six minutes to go. Kelvin fires one forward. And it's up to uh, Dorian Heiser to close it down. All the way back to Matthew Ryan in the Napoli goal. The clearance, though, looked a little bit rushed to me. And Yosu, in the centre, is uh, is dribbling backwards, which is never good. Hatterball into Kelvin. Sousa now. Where are you going to go? Up to Dorian. Doesn't quite get there. Koulibaly is a bit taller, to be fair. Eloua slides it through. Pereira, left side. Ball played across. Ryan's there. Renzi. Oh, it was a chance, surely. Still time. I don't know if that was the highlight or not. That was the key moment. Pereira, back on it. Tackled. It was. Oh, no. All right, there's not long to go. I don't think we're going to steal it here. I, know, I cannot be dealing with lots of sort of 1-0 defence feats again that was the story of last season i cannot be dealing with it 50 seconds to go and that throw in wasn't that good although they come away with it here and uh, they're just going to keep it aren't they? they're not going to do anything too fancy they're just going to run down the clock and <sighs> you've got to respect it no oh. no that's not that's not running down the clock at all that's that's getting a second and making us look even worse i mean there's no doubt napoli underperformed last season i mean we beat them twice but this is uh this is a shame 
what can I tell you? This is a shame. Look, our boys are still getting to know each other. It's early days. I'm not worried that much. I do still think, though, we'll have a good season. That's not the greatest start. Of course it's not. But if you look at the actual batch stats of the game, if you look at how even it was, that's not a good... I was pleased, but they didn't like it. If you look at the stats of the game, we've actually had quite an even match with them. I don't... I'm not, again, I'm not too disappointed in terms of possession, passes completed. Actually, I don't, I don't think it's too bad. I don't think it's too bad. Just we haven't taken our chances. They've taken theirs football that is football and that then is going to bring us to the end if you've enjoyed the video please leave a like if you want to see more subscribe to the channel and do you think we should sign jamie vardy just just wondering seriously should we should we sign jamie vardy i mean 50k a week for a year 52 all right there's a poll in the top right let me know